It was a dark and stormy night Nor'easter rolling in It's a long 12 hours The power's out again I pray for inner strength And that we don't lose no lives Just another day In the first responder's eyes Half a cup of coffee's gone The first run comes in A car slid off the road There's a family trapped within My heart beats like a hammer I can barely catch my breath I'm thinking the worst And hoping for the best Yeah, we ain't superheroes We're just ordinary people Trying to make a difference And the first on every scene It's a heavy, heavy burden To carry all this burden When you can't unsee the things you've seen It keeps going on When those sirens are gone Hey, welcome to the night. <laughs> I keep doing that. Hey, welcome to the award-winning Mad Radio Show, broadcasting live from Fishbowl Radio Network Studios here in Globe Live Park, the heart of the entertainment district here in Arlington, Texas. You are listening to John and Sam on this Making a Difference Wednesday, and we are healing after the aftermath. Welcome, Sam. How are you? I am doing great. Man, it's been a crazy week. Uh you know, we had um, a 41-year veteran of the Houston Police Department uh, gunned down in a domestic violence call that shouldn't have happened. Our, pra- our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, his friends, and to the whole Houston Police Department for um, and this incident should have never, ever happened. Um, a criminal was let back out onto the streets um to murder one of our own and um i think uh accountability in the Houston DA's office and the DA's got some explaining to do the DA's office and the judge who yes, handled yes. the case um to give a known felon known illegal uh back ammunition knowing that he had a gun somewhere in that apartment um, was a cocktail for disaster. And I think that uh, Sergeant Preston and his family paid the price for um, a system that is becoming broken. Well, it sounds like the DA's office and the judges need to go through the course that I teach. (laughs) Just saying, uh, the Texas License to Carry course and uh, what determines your eligibility because clearly uh, this person, it's murderer, let's call him what he is, uh, should not have a gun. So the inference being, wait a sec, he has ammo? Maybe he has a gun. Maybe we need to look into it. Maybe we don't let him out. Maybe... He doesn't gun down a 41-year veteran of HPD. Right. And, you know. And the, uh, I believe the, the other officer was uh, injured as well. Yeah. And so was his, the guy's 14-year-old son was shot in the yeah. sea, shot his 14-year-old son in the stomach. So. You know, and what gets me is this guy dated back. He had a, a violent felony history dating back almost 10 years. Um, and since um, Houston is a sanctuary city, um The proper authorities were never notified of any of those arrests. Um, Yeah, but the judge had his jacket. So FFFF, that F word, felony, ammunition, gun. Hello. How do you you not? I don't understand how you do that. Our investigator minds, it's like, that's a clue. Yeah, I don't. What do you need? A two by four upside the head? I don't get it. I don't get it. And like I said, um, a man who, who dedicated his life to Houston, spent 41 years serving the community. Uh, ready for retirement, ready to enjoy his life with his family, um, was taken away from him because of uh, politics. 
yeah. because of politics. Yep. Well, I need to uh, give a huge shout out to um, the the parking folks here, just in front of uh, in front of the fishbowl. Uh, apparently, if you care, uh, there's a World Series going on. <laughs> not that we care. We got good stuff going on here in the studio, and we're not supposed to be parking in the lot that we're assigned to park in each week. So um, I I smiled nicely and asked nicely and they said please you. and he's like you know you might get one of the last spots but don't tell anybody else so you know i got here i got here just before i got here about two o'clock this afternoon and our parking lot was packed we had i mean because i think uh there's about they're fitting about eighteen thousand fans into uh globe life field for the world series they're about 25 percent capacity but it it's really 100% capacity in our parking lot, so it is, it is making yeah. it a little difficult. Um, today we were supposed to have Blues Police Magazine coming in uh, to do a story on, uh, to, to try to do a story on Mad Radio and Healing Our Heroes, but uh, unfortunately they had uh, some, some transportation issues around Houston and uh, had to turn around. Uh, but we will have them back next week. Uh, I hope they limp that uh, the car home. Mike, hope you got home safe. And we are looking forward to having you on the radio show next Wednesday. Um, today, we have uh, a very good friend of ours. Um, he is a retired SWAT officer from Orlando, Florida. He is one of the co-hosts of Trauma Behind the Badge. You can check those guys out every Tuesday on uh, their webinar. I've been, I've been watching their webinar for the last couple of months, and I tell you, it's informative. It's back lot talk for our law enforcement. It's everything we talk about in the back parking lot, and um, it really helps you heal on a different level than sitting on a therapy couch. So check out Trauma Behind the Badge. Check them out on Facebook. Um, it's a free registration for their webinar, and it's an hour long, but it's the best hour you have ever spent on a Tuesday night. TraumaBehindTheBadge.org. We are going to get in touch with um, Raul Rivas. Uh, we are trying to get him up on the video and Skype right now, but uh, we are working on that as uh we speak once again man i want to thank uh laura moore for watching demi stewart as always judy thank you uh judy what's the matter with the audio she says she said sorry my bad okay so we got some good uh audio going on uh please like and share this show because your share into different groups with mad radio can save a life it's um it's all about healing our first responders and the different uh, therapeutic um, processes that are out there. Post-traumatic stress uh, can affect people in different ways. It has uh, no boundaries, but the therapeutic aspect of post-traumatic stress is varies in many different ways. You know, what works for one person may not work for another. So we try to get you the vetted services that are out there to help you heal. Um, once again, we are trying to get uh, Raul on the uh, line. What, maybe uh, Florida is blocking us? <laughs> you know? But once again, please like and share our show. And if you go on to my personal webpage, we are doing a, a breast cancer awareness walk ruck on Heroes Memorial Bridge on this upcoming Sunday. Uh, Melinda... McLennan is organizing that, and um, I have agreed to shave my head to the highest donation. The highest donation gets to shave my head at the foot of Heroes Bridge. So come on out and um, watch me get my head shaved at the uh, foot of Heroes Bridge to raise awareness for breast cancer. Hey, thank you for joining in, Bruce. Uh, Always a pleasure. I'm glad you got back safe. Uh, we, yeah, so we, we're, we're yeah we're trying to get uh, Raul here connected with uh, the, our Skype account and everything. Um, in the meantime, sharing some good news since we're talking about trauma behind the badge. Waiting for Raul to come on. Uh, great news to report. Um, last week I, I talked about a friend that reached out was really in a bad place. 
he is now in a safe place receiving oh, treatment and Excellent. he will be moving on to uh one of our vetted partners um until he's he's like ready to come home so fantastic that's yeah. always a good news story to find you know so best of luck to him and prayers to his family as his wife um he has a wife and he has a grown son but it doesn't matter how old you are and how long you've been married it still right. takes its toll so um yeah so you know prayers we we've been seeing um actually i hearing more and more people battling uh mm -hmm. each and every day and it seems like there's an uptick in it. And I don't know if it's got to do with the lockdown. I don't know if it's got to do with, um, you know, people, the mental stress of this COVID pandemic is really weighing on a lot of our first responders um, because they're not, not, not able to process things on a normal level anymore. You know, they're, they're working, they're, whatever shifts they're working, they have, especially off uh, law enforcement, they're inundated with um, now with riots and civil unrest and the elections. And I know New York has canceled a lot of um, days off and vacations for the upcoming election. So that's putting more people on a stressful level. So now you got the elections, you got COVID. <laughs> On it's top the perfect of, storm. On, on, yeah, it is. So, it really is. And on top I'm, I'm laughing not because it's funny because somebody had a yard sign, you know, so the election coming up, you typical right. yard signs. Um, f fiery ball of death <laughs> for 2020. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, uh, asking for a clean, clean slate to uh oh, are we getting a call? No, I think that's oh, from that's, another studio. Well, that wow, we have good loud. hearing yeah, today. Yeah, that phone that's is surprising. loud. Um, but, uh, you know, not to make light of it, but, but, you know, one of the biggest things with stress is the lack of control. And one thing that I've noticed that's affected law enforcement and non-law enforcement alike is we don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen. It seems like minute to minute you're getting conflicting reports about mm. everything. Right. And that takes its toll and you can it, because you want to process something that makes sense to you right? right you want to feel like something is making sense uh you you don't want to worry about your child going to school every day oh my god are they going to come back with covid is somebody going to get covid is a teacher going to get covid where were they last night i mean right. but the whole but the 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 bigger issue that that i don't think we're paying attention to is the media and social media is all spinning this to keep us in that box where right. we don't have control there is there is I, yeah do we have a do we have nope. a call call or is that raul okay all oh, right okay. We got our we got our <laughs> board manager michael on the ball here so all right so once we get him up hey, on hey. video can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Look at that voice, man. It's, it's, that's like a Luther Vandross voice, man. <laughs> we, hear, we hear you, Raul. All right. Can you guys yeah. see me? Let me ask you that. Yes, we can see you. Oh. Yay. See, oh. when technology works, it's yes, a wonderful thing. Yes, it's a wonderful thing. thing. It's a wonderful there thing. There you yeah. are. I was uh right. I was worried there for a minute. Trust me, I I got I got real worried. So <laughs> man, I don't know if I did something wrong or what. No, that's why we got young tech guys that know how how to connect those dots uh, working our board. So thank you, yeah. Michael, and thank, Raul. Thank, thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, twenty six year veteran of the uh, retired now from Orlando PD SWAT, and yes. uh, for those listening. Just like 9-11, I think a lot of us remember where we were when the Pulse nightclub shooting went down. Yeah. Um, it really, we had, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Raul, over 100 people uh, shot and 49 yes. people died. Yes, ma'am. Um, and uh, it, that number, I think it's up in the, it's 50 something now because some people have passed uh, due to, to the uh, incident, but it took them, you know, they died later, so. Got it. Got it. So um, mostly young kids, mostly you know. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, uh, you know, young, young club goers. You know, uh, you know, people at, at the club. You know, in twenties and thirties. Yeah, I guess they're kids to us. Yeah, but, uh, kids yeah, to us. adults. <laughs> you know, 
yeah. know you've had a pretty um uh pretty uh busy career going from in Orlando uh becoming a SWAT team member and then uh actually you were leading the SWAT team weren't you at one point? I, I was an assistant team leader so I'm one of the guy one, one you know leadership on the team so yes sir you know right there that is a that's that's a job that you know only a few could handle and you know be, you know being a patrol cop is one thing you're looking at you and your partner but being a SWAT team leader you have a you're responsible for a lot of lives your decisions your 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 um your tactics have to be on point at all at all times so when we talk about hyper vigilance and we talk about trying to keep that that blade as sharp as possible to make sure that everybody goes home safe man i I can't imagine the the mental anguish every day that ran through your head i mean i'm sure there were good times because swat teams really bond a lot (laughs) but um Mm -hmm. you know i i the the training the mental uh preparedness has to be on point at every given moment no absolutely uh i'll tell you that um, I praise OPD in so many ways, and, and that and what you just brought up is one of the ways that I praise them. Uh, uh, I enjoyed uh, good leadership on the on the OPD SWAT team uh, for all my years that I was there. Uh, truly had some warriors, uh, leaders and warriors, and, and that's not the same. You know, you can be a leader and not a warrior. You can be a warrior and they may not be a leader. Uh, I was able to have both um, in my leadership in my time at the uh, on the SWAT team. So, uh, and, and then it becomes easy to learn from that. You know, you, you're watching the the leaders in front of you, and you're watching the warriors and what they do in certain things. So, you begin to uh, uh, emulate th- th- those things. And uh, uh, I was real lucky in that in that regard. I'm absolutely lucky, and I, I will sing the praises of my leaders uh, on the SWAT team through my years. Anytime I get a chance, I was real lucky. Well, you know, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, do you mind taking us back uh, mm-hmm. to that day? Because for you, you're showing up. It's well, bef- another day at work. Before, oh, John wants be- to yeah, go. Yeah, before, before we get into that as, as well, I, I just want to one, I, you know, I commended you on this, you know, the the 26 years of service. But you know, you you still give, and I want to give a big shout out to Trauma Behind the Badge because now you're part of that team. Yes, sir. Um, which, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. goes out and, and helps other officers. Tell us how you got involved with that as well. Wow. Uh, which one do we want to start uh, first? Go Trauma behind Michael. the bed. <laughs> Trauma behind the bed. John's going to go with the oh. end of the kind of the wraparound after work, and then we'll go <laughs> okay. back to uh, <laughs> the uh, day of. Uh, oh. <laughs> am, am I going uh, out of turn here? <laughs> it's out of order, but it's all, all right, good. All right. It's all uh, good. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to go well, out of order. You guys are going to have a drink, so excuse me one second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only plan. Excuse me. Uh, so basically, um, after the Pulse incident, and after we were kind of free to, to talk about it a little bit, I happened to be uh, given a debrief uh, at, at a conference, and um, I don't know a whole lot about mental health except to know that I was, I had some shit going on in my head, um, and, and and as well as a bunch of us on the SWAT team. Um, and the debriefs kind of helped me a little bit, uh, and, you know, just talking about it and and who's in the audience, but, uh, Doug Monda listening to me and, uh, and and that connection was made. Um, and and I, and and that, that's where it was. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, we just, uh, we clicked right away. Um, and, and, you know, it, whoever's met Doug knows he's just that guy, you know, he just, he's kind of, you know, uh, you just, you gotta like him. And it, it, there's another way to put it. You just gotta like Doug. He's just that guy, you know, and, uh, and we clicked and then we started talking and, and, and talking more and talking more. And, uh, I, I just, I'm so honored and privileged. He asked me to be part of the team. Uh, and, and man, what a team. I had no idea I was, I was going into an all-star team like this, uh, you know, uh, and, and I, I am not worthy, uh, you know, Chris Scallon, Chris Fields, Doug Monda, uh, you know, the boss lady, Jen, uh, uh, they are just, I just can't say enough. Th- th- those people uh, behind the scenes and, and, and the all-star team I just gave you, just unbelievable. Uh, and again, I'm not worthy, uh, but I'm going to try to do them proud, but that's how we kind of met up and, uh, 
and, and the education that I have gotten since I've been with them, just, just uh, the mental health uh, side of it. Again, I, I, you know, I know my story and I know, I know what I've went through and I know my little world, you know, at, at the Orlando Police Department and, and the guys around me and what they've gone through. But, uh, and of course I knew that other people around the country were going through it, but now I'm kind of seeing it, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing it and I'm talking to people about it. And it's just, I can't tell you how, how it, 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 it does something inside of me that I just can't explain. So, uh, just thank you to Doug. And, and, and I got to meet people like you, you know, uh, John and Sam, I can't say enough, you know, and, and, and uh, Mongo and a uh, 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 sideshow. I, I just, you know, man, I, 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 if not for Doug and, and trying behind the badge and, and us, you know, doing what we're trying to do and just do the good work, uh, you know, I wouldn't meet people like you guys. So, uh, and hopefully I'm making a difference by telling my story. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Go, I'm sorry. All right, now, you now, are. now we can circle <laughs> now back we go, around. <laughs> now we're gonna now we're gonna circle back around to connect the dots so that people right, really right, right. understand um, you know, how how your mindset changed because let's face it, I mean you you know, you, me and John, we we uh, put on the badge, we put on the gun, walk out the door, ready for right. another day's work. We're ready to tackle whatever comes uh, our way and uh what happened? You know, you're you're at you're at work. Yeah. Take us through. You know, it, it's it's. I, I always talk about it. it's so weird how things happen, and, and I, I well, weird's not a good word. I, I call it the SWAT gods, and, and I, I say that because uh, um, we always we have a saying in Orlando where you know things happen in threes, and, when, when, and I don't say Orlando, the Orlando SWAT team. We have a saying that things happen in threes, and. How is it that we had two SWAT call outs within probably 30 something hours, uh, both of them hostage situations, and then pulse happened? Was that the SWAT guys trying to sharpen our blade a little bit, getting us ready? I don't know, you know, but, uh, and, and they were real deals. I mean, uh, uh, the, the one just before pulse happened that afternoon, uh, guy, a uh, vehicle pursuit, and, and uh, crashes and, and runs into a house and takes people hostage. And we were there for a couple hours doing our thing. And, uh, uh, I remember just being totally because I, I ended up having to, we ended up having to make entry into a gas department and, uh, we confronted the guy, uh, in, in the bathroom and, and the fight was on. I mean, he gave us everything we could handle. And, uh, I remember just being totally gassed and then, uh, going home, uh, well, I didn't even get, get to go home. Uh, went to uh, visit some family, and by the time I got home, I don't think I, I, I barely put my left butt cheek on the bed, and the damn phone was going off. Hmm. And uh, it said active shooter. You know, we respond to this address, and, and my first thought was, active shooter goes what, three minutes, five minutes? Mm -hmm. How long does that last for? You know. I'm 30 minutes away from the scene easily. So my first thought was by the time I scratched my butt, <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> put my pants on, this thing's going to be over. Uh, it didn't get real to me until I got in my car, turned the radio on. It's still going on. I'm like, what kind of active shooter is this? You know, so that, that was a, uh, that was my mindset going in, uh, you know, some, you know, but then listen to the radio, uh, I get all the way down there. Um, we're at a club and, and it's a club that I, I, I've heard of, but just, uh, never, never went there. There's never no problems that I can remember. And I may be sheltered in that way, but I don't remember any, any problems ever happening at that club. I mean, we barely knew it was there. Um, get to the club and, and I tell you the uh, and I don't want to ever call it a, a SWAT call out normal uh, but everything was normal you know where we're, we're everybody's setting up uh, they think they've got them kind of barricaded in the back of the club and this is the thing I talk about uh, when I talk about leadership uh, Everybody was told to grab the next guy coming in, take him inside. And that's when it became real. When uh, 
I was taken inside the club to see the carnage that he had left behind on the dance floors. And, and this, you know, it was like a war zone. I've done my military time. I've seen some dead bodies and on the job in the military. It was like a war zone. And we're talking here on the U.S. soil. It wasn't, this wasn't some third world country, you know, uh, during a wartime situation. This is, you know, little Orlando, Florida, United States of America, bodies upon bodies all on the dance floor. That, that, that's, when it, that's when it became real uh, that we have a person here that, that has uh, shown his willingness and, and, and ability to do what he said he's going to do. So, Raul, when you went into the, when you went, when you entered the Pulse nightclub, mm -hmm. um, the shooter was still barricaded. Yes, sir. All right, I'm yeah. just trying to get. I'm just trying to get a picture of the uh, so, the to, building. To you yeah. walk in. There's mm -hmm. the the carnage is on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. You 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 have multiple multiple victims, um, deceased. And now mm -hmm. you're making your way through there to where the uh, the active shooter is um, barricaded. That's correct. Okay. Um, so uh, one of the warriors that I talk about, Scott Smith, is one of the guys that 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 started pushing the uh, pushing the assault towards him, and his uh, efforts led him to barricading in, into the back bathrooms. Um, and and if you would, uh, it's going to be hard to you know, try to paint a picture here, but uh, if you were to go into the front of the club, uh, the bathrooms were past the, the dance floor, past the bar, to the back of the club. That's where the, that's where the, the uh, bathrooms were at. And uh, so he had barricaded himself down this hallway that led to two bathrooms. There's a, a left bathroom. And I say left and right bathroom because, because this was a, a gay nightclub. Uh, those two bathrooms there didn't have any, uh, it wasn't a male or female, it's just left and right, you just go wherever you want to go. So you go down this hallway, there's a left door, right door, uh, that they were opposing, and that he was barricaded back down that hallway, and that, you know, and that was the back of the club. I mean, there was no way to get out of there. Um, now, of course, uh, Scott Smith, who's the warrior I'm talking about, that pushed the action, uh, he didn't know when he got there, um, he's pushing the action because he heard some shots. He moved towards the shots and he couldn't hear anything else. Uh, he stopped right there and, and then no other shots were fired until three hours later. So that's where it became barricaded. So you guys, you guys were in there for three hours. Yeah. Um, stand sitting at the ready or, or at the ready. Um, mm -hmm. Was there any communication between you guys and the uh, shooter? Yeah, so he, uh, and, and so there's, there was 911 calls, of course, that were made from people inside, uh, people in the bathroom, uh, in, in the opposite bathroom that he was in. Um, and, and then, of course, he did uh, dial 911 at some point. And there was some communica communication with him uh, during that time. Um, and he was just, uh, I mean, he was out there. It's a, it's a, I've got, and my, and when I do a debrief, I've got some of the recordings that, uh, where he's talking to 911 and uh, just, just, uh, just out there. I can't even explain it. Just, just, just way out there, you know, uh, uh, pledging allegiance and all that kind of shit. So, so I'm sorry. I can't you, curse. I'm sorry about that. You, but, <laughs> wow, I didn't even know this. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you still had survivors still. Yes. So they're yes. trapped yes. in the bathroom across. So. You know, in essence, they're hostages because they they're pinned yes. down. They can't leave. Yes, absolutely. So he's got he's got people in both bathrooms, and that, when I say people, there there are people in both bathrooms. Of course, the ones that he has in, in his bathroom, and then across the hall there in the other bathroom, there's people that are like just hiding in there. And, and you got to understand that. Uh, um, and again, I'll try to paint a picture, but he walked through the club just firing and as people would fall down he would walk over them and fire again on them executing them jesus so this, this is the kind of you know this is the kind of person that we're talking about and you know people did everything they could to survive 
God bless every one of them. Uh, were people trying to hide underneath other people? Yeah, probably so. Were people uh, hunkering down in a, in a corner where they thought it maybe say, yeah. They, were, were they trying to hide in the bathroom? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and so even though he may not have been in one of the bathrooms, they, they didn't feel safe trying to come out. They didn't know where he was, you know, or, or, or they knew he was in the bathroom, but, you know, trying to time to come out that door, would he be coming at the same time? You know, that, that's, a, that's a scary uh, proposition, too. So, yeah, they were hunkering down in, in, in both bath, well, the other bathroom, and, of course, he had hostages in the bathroom he was in. You know, Sam, me and you talk about this all the time, uh, the decompression, okay? Yeah. Like Raul was saying, that just before this shooting incident, he was at another hostage situation, gets mm -hmm. home, there is no chance for decompression. He, his ass didn't even hit the, the couch yet. <laughs> yeah, no. I think it was his right. His, the left one did. He didn't get the scratch. He didn't get the scratch right. The left but, you know, one I, got a little bit. That's saying the left one got a little bit of the bed, but the right one didn't get any of it. <laughs> you know, and and the phone rings and he's back out. And now yeah. now he's at this other trauma. Mm -hmm. You know. Because even following the, it along on the radio, because like you said, I mean, you and I, active right. shooters, it is two, three, five minutes max. Right. Yeah. So and now this is still going. Your your head still, you know, and that, you know, this is where we talk about cops are not robots. You know, they can't just shut down the one incident and turn on another. You know, right. you're you're re still replaying that first hostage situation in your head when you're getting mm -hmm. home, and now you gotta once again get into that that training mode. Mm -hmm. You get to hear. You got to flip the switch. Now you right. get there, and so many things. I can't imagine the things that are running through your head, knowing that you still have survivors there. You walk through carnage on a dance floor. Mm -hmm. You still mm -hmm. got survivors in the back in the back bathrooms. Is right. this guy going to come out holding hostages as human shields? Are you going right. to have to take a life? I mean, how do you? How do you? How does your thought process go through? I mean, how do you? You work through that. That's. Yeah, well, I mean, so at that, at that point when it's barricaded, it, it was it was a barricaded gunman hostage situation. We're thinking hostage hostage rescue, and so we're trying to figure that part out, you know. And uh, and 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 uh, people that don't know, I'm, I'm sure that the, the people that are listening know about this, but you know, hostage rescues are are, are planned, man. We plan that to a T. We, we rehearse it. We rehearse it. We rehearse it. Um, you know, we, we've got to know, everybody has to know what the next guy is going to do. You got to know where the corners are. You just, it, it's rehearsed until it can't, we, we rehearse it until we can't get it wrong. And so problem, we had a bunch of problems in this one though. Uh, we didn't really have a good layout of what, what it looked like inside. Then, uh, you know, it, it was, I'm not sure who knows this, but he uh, he claimed bomb, that he had a bomb. Right. Another element. Yeah. And then, then, then the uh, claim came out that, uh, that he had a bomb out in, the, in his car, which was parked just outside of the club. So now we've got two bombs. And then a little later on, Intel comes out that he's strapping bombs onto the hostages and then start sending them out. Wow. So that changes everything. That yeah. changes everything. You know, we, we have to, you know, from where you may have been 25 yards away, now you got to back up a little bit. Got to back everybody up. You got to get everybody out of the parking lot too. Right. So now your game plan changes. Your game plan and changes. So, and so now, and now, is there any doubt in anybody's mind based on the what you've seen when you go there with all the bodies? Any doubt that he's going to detonate? Right. Because he's already proven that he's willing to kill and to yes, kill sir. as many. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so now, now there are there are photos and uh, I, you know, please walk us through this. The photos of the scene, and I don't know if it was afterwards, where there are giant holes in in the brick. It looks like in the nightclub structure itself. 
Right, right, right. So those those were done. Um, you know, it came it, there came a time. Uh, what are we going to do? Um, you know, uh, are, are we going to? Because it's going to be almost impossible to kind of focus on trying to get him and save the people in the other bathroom at the same time. It was going to be really tough to do that because of the space, because of the layout, because of the, the, the makeup of the place, um, and of course, the bombs. Um, so it was determined that we were going to try to save as many people as we could. And uh, we basically started busting holes through the exterior wall that led into those bathrooms. When I say bathrooms, we, we, we now, I'm fast forwarding a little bit, we now know that he's in the, I'm in the north bathroom, and I know everybody doesn't know what that means, but we know he's in the north bathroom, so it would be the one to the right. Um, and, and we kind of figured that out uh, through some intel and 911 call and that kind of thing. Uh, so we started busting the hole through the uh, left south bathroom to, to rescue people. And, and, and you talk about mindset, that's the first time in my SWAT career that the veterans, and it just is weird how this happens, but veterans always migrate to where the shit happens. I'm sorry, <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> we always migrate to where the action's going to be, where the stuff's going to be. So we end up being back there, and it's a bunch, bunch of veteran SWAT guys, and it's the first time in my career that I've ever heard us uh, talk knowing that we were going to die because um, the bomb's going to go off any second now. Hmm. So let's, let's just keep saving as many as we can until the bomb goes off. So you guys, that, you guys, already, you guys already put into your head that we're not going to make it out of this one. Yeah, we, we knew we knew that we weren't going to make it. And, and, and uh, uh, again, I talk about leadership and, and, and the Warriors and the team um, so whenever there's a call out, uh, the command post, I, I call it the ivory tower, you know, that, that, that's where all the, the chiefs and the, and the captains, you know, and, and, and that's where it's supposed to be. They, they're up there and they're moving the chess pieces, right? They got to move us around to, to, you know, make sure that we win whatever, uh, uh, scenario we're, we're facing. So, uh. Our SWAT commander, Mark Canty, um, you know, he's up in the ivory tower and, and he hardly ever comes out I mean, because there's just so much going on. He gets all the info, all the intel, and he's making decisions. He's moving the, the chess pieces. Uh, this is the first time that I saw him come out and make some decisions and look people in their eyes because he knew mm -hmm. what he was asking us was to stay knowing that this bomb's going off. So he's, you know, in a sense, asking us to sit there and die. Not sit there, but work, keep working until you die. Hard decision for a commander to make. Sir, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. just not, not to cut you off, but, you know, that brings us back to uh, another command decision in Worcester, Massachusetts, when they lost the nine firefighters. Um, they were missing two firefighters. They sent two more in to go look for them in the cold storage warehouse. Then they sent mm -hmm. another two in. And then they sent another two in. And ah. May Day after May Day after May Day. And before they sent any more guys in. And just like fire, just like cops, firefighters are the same way, mm -hmm. man. They're going to run in to help a brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The chief stood at the door and refused anybody else, any more firefighters to go in. You right. Know, he made that decision. Hard, yeah. hard pressed decisions to make. And I'm sure this was the, one of those same decisions by a character. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there, there's a, I talk about it in my, in my uh, debrief where there's a few, more than a few decisions that, that Mark Canty, the captain, had to make uh, that at the time, of course, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was just following orders and kind of doing my thing. But, uh, uh, Man, just just the leadership, the, the decision making, and to talk to him, he knew what he was asking of us. Let's go save some people, and and there wasn't a man, SWAT team, patrol officer, uh, uh, everybody, and nobody left that scene 
Some, even the people that backed up a little bit, they ain't back up far enough. Nobody left. Now, I, I am so proud of not only the SWAT team and what we did, but every patrol person and, and agency representative that was there, because I'm telling you, everybody showed up. Uh, we had, you know, all the sister agencies were there to lend whatever hand a, 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 during the beginning when this became the triage and trying to get people, uh, live victims out of the club. Um, you know, everybody was there. And when the bomb threat came up, nobody left. Nobody left. Wow. And, how, and just for everybody listening, just remind everybody how long, I'll call it a siege. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know any other way to to describe yeah. it. Uh, lasted, you know, start to finish. Yeah. So it started in the, in the about the two o'clock, two I forget the two o two something like that, and it ended at five thirty something. So uh, about three and a half hours. Uh, so and it was literally three hours of, of just no shots being fired at all. So that's why, you know, so I always make that distinction about the active shooter part and the barricaded gunman part. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and so also, this is, this is the Murphy thing. Uh, you go into the cup club, it's painted black, got mirrors everywhere, and echoes like a damn club's supposed to. Mm -hmm. hmm. right. So when you're hearing people yelling and screaming, you can't tell where the hell it's coming from. You know, so, uh, and there's a point uh, at the video that I have that shows Scott kind of, he hears some shots, he moves to the area of the club that he hears the shots come from, but then he just don't know where, and he hears people screaming, but he can't tell where it's coming from. Wow. You know, it's just, a, and, and again, that's, that's the Murphy part of the whole story, you know. Uh, that's why God's helped us, though, because uh, who would have thought that the DJ would have had sense to turn the music off? Right. Before he ran. That's the SWAT guys right there, right? I mean, that, you know, because I can't imagine having to go into that club with all that crap going on. You know, just the, 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 the music and the, and the lights and it's just all that more, more stimulus coming at you while you're trying to make a decision, a tactical decision. It's just, that it would have been a lot. Very disorienting. Yeah. 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 How did the... Um... And I'm old, so I can't take that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um... How did the how did the siege finally end? So we uh, we make the holes in the back there, and, uh, and and we're trying to trying to rescue everybody we can. And uh, man, he he comes out like Rambo, two fisting, guns blazing, uh, shooting out the hole. So he comes out of the bathroom right to where the big hole is there, and. Uh, and he, he, he's just shooting. So, uh, you know, all, all we could see was a, a, a figure muzzle flash and he got shot. We, we shot him. So it was, it was probably death by cop. It was, it was suicide by cop. He knew he wasn't making it out of there. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I firmly believe in my heart that he was doing everything he could to get us to come in. So he was going to try to take a couple of us with him. And he knew he was going to die. I believe that in my heart. Um, we didn't kind of take that bait like the way he wanted. So he came out. And I think when he when he came out, I don't think he realized that he would be. In, so there's a cloud of freaking like dust and, and, and stuff there. So whether he could see really good or not, I'm not sure. But when he came out, he was, he was shooting as much as he could out that damn hole. And, uh, and, and you know, we lit him up. Man. And then it was kind of over. I mean, for you guys, you know, you neutralized the threat. Mm -hmm. um, the threat is now stopped. Right. And you still got there, there's so, you know, he to, he well, we're not sure if he still has a bomb, but, you know, yeah. if he had any kind of detonator, you know, right. nothing, nothing exploded. So I am not the bomb guy. I I I, I don't like him. <laughs> I'm just not the but bomb guy. But I mean, guy. but nothing nothing exploded. So here you nothing, have you nothing you exploded. Yeah. Nothing exploded. Uh, 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 we uh, man, I, I just you know. So even though he's down, 
we're still trying to save people and we're racing against the bomb because so I'm in my, in my thought process is we just shot this guy up how'd that bomb not go off right you know, what what you know and again I don't know shit about bombs <laughs> sorry <laughs> I don't know anything about bombs but uh uh you know how did it not go off being shot you know so um and, and so anyway you know so now we're kind of racing we're racing we're racing trying to grab people as fast as we can make another hole in the uh in the wall there to, to, to get another access point to get more people out so yeah it, it was a race i mean so it, while he was down it wasn't over wow and then did you was there a separate team working in the parking lot on his car yeah, so that happened after. Um, so they had a dog go out there, and uh, the dog did indicate on the car. It was actually a van. Um, indicated on the van, you know, so they, they, they definitely thought they had bombs over there. And uh, uh, that they didn't clear that until after everybody was gone. Okay. So we kind of focused on the people in the back because everybody in the club except for the two bathrooms had been evacuated. Wow. Well, we clearly do not. I mean, this hour has yeah. raced by. We do not have enough <laughs> time. No, Wait. no. To People are on the edge of their seats. I mean, people are adrenaline overdrive. I mean, I mean we, people we could are take, making comments. The, just, one, the one thing I want to ask is, you know, once again, and we, we cover this all the time, is, you know, no human being on the face of this earth is able to really mentally process something like this without... <laughs> sufficient help without without you know no one can go through some sort of outlet yeah. yeah no one can just go through this and say oh, i'm okay because there's no way you can and be this okay was number three right so yeah, yeah, yeah. real real quick and i i, I want to do a part two to this with you raul but yeah, no problem. how how was the processing for you and what what did you feel how how long after this incident did it really turn around and go holy crap what was I involved in? Man, uh, you know, I didn't. It got well. So going to the doctors and everything, and the and the psychs, you know, all that kind of stuff, that sucked um, initially. And then and then we found the right kind of doctors for us, and that was good. Uh, but in my mind, I was good. So I don't think it was till about a year and a half. Well, I'm sorry, a year later. Is when it, it you know it kind of hit me, um, and I you know realized I, I I got I got some shit in my head. Darn it! I'm sorry, guys. No, <laughs> I got some right. stuff you're in good. my head I got to deal right. with. I mean, did um, you have a debrief though? You know, after yes. there's press to deal with, there's lots of things going yeah. on. Did you debrief uh, as a team? We right did. There? We did. We debriefed as a team, and and even that. Uh, and a really quick story on that is that uh. We, they said, hey, we're going to debrief at whatever day, whatever time, uh, and it's going to be a catered lunch, you know, just come out. So I'm thinking, hey, great, free lunch, 30 minutes, yeah. I'm out, you know, so I'm good. Um, again, I, I, I can't say enough about the leadership, but Scott Smith, again, one of the people I consider to be a warrior, was the first, and he's a lieutenant on the team, first guy to speak, spoke from his heart, let us know that he was hurting. And that 30 minute meeting turned into four hours wow. of guys talking. I, I just can't say enough um, how, how proud I am of, of this, of the SWAT team. That's, that's amazing. And to have your leadership step up that's good. And, that's good. and kind of start the ball rolling, lay the groundwork, lay that comfort factor and we're going to pick it up. Raul, I hope you're available next week. Because yeah. <laughs> we uh, want to. Wanna... Yeah, I think so. We'll talk, Sam. We'll get it done. Okay, yeah, good. Because we, we want to bring people in. So we've got kind of the part one. We've got the trauma. Yeah. And All now right. we got to heal. And we want everybody to understand you're, you're hearing this from somebody that went through one of the worst it's active shooters that nation this history. nation has ever seen. Yeah. Um, so, you know, John and I, we can tell our nine 11 stories. So the cow comes home, but we got to bring fresh stories on to show you that this continues. 
You know, yes. th- this is just going to keep going and what the men and women are exposed to every day. We really have to take a step back because it's not just them continuing to serve without any thought of themselves. They stayed knowing the bombs were going to go off, but they did their job. And now we have to pay attention to what happens after. So yep. we've got to sign off the air here. Raul, thank you so much. Yes, and thank to you. Thank all you. of the men and women out there in uniform that are serving us here and abroad, we are with you. We love you. We pray for you every day. And once again, thank you, Raul. Tune in next thank week. Uh, if, as long as Raul is available, we'll do a part two on the healing. And remember, um, if anything, today is not the day to give up. Remember that. Yeah. Until next week. Love you. Stay blessed. Take Raul, care, guys. Thank you so well. much. We'll talk. All right. Take care.